All right, welcome back. So today we're going to solve a problem of the problem of setting data. So we can send, you know, bytes arrays, we can send data easily. The issue is how we structure that data. So whenever you receive something, you just receive a bunch of bytes, which is cool. But, you know, what do those bytes mean? You know, how do we keep them consistent between server and client? So if we change something on the server, we don't break the client each time and we have to refactor things. And to solve this, on the previous episode, we set up a local package where we could share scripts essentially between the server project and Unity, and we could change on the server and it could see it directly reflect on the Unity client. This way, you know, we have code that's being shared and it's consistent across both server and client without having to copy things or whatever the case may be. It's all handled by Unity. So if, if it allows us to do this, why not take full advantage of it, right? Yeah. I'm right. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to use this. Let's go ahead and start this, this GitHub repo, which is a byte stream. So essentially this allows us to write data easily onto a stream in like a very fast way. So for example, you know, you could see here some benchmarks of how long it takes compared to some other things that come with C sharp, which, you know, I allocate random stuff and whatnot. This just seemed like a good solution. And I played with this a little before on a different project. And, you know, I really liked it was an extremely fast, uh, extremely not fast, extremely simple uh, way to work with this. And I just, you know, I have a lot of good stuff to say about this. So I'm going to be using this. <laughs> yeah. So the, essentially we're going to do something like this where, you know, we are going to have a, a struct. I don't like using classes for networking stuff. So we're going to have a struct, you know, very much of data. And then we're just going to implement something like this. And bada beam, bada boom, we can network this around. Y you'll see, it's easy peasy. So this will just allow us to send data extremely easily back and forth. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download the, the source code and I'm gonna import it directly into the package. I'm not going to install it through Nugget just cause it's gonna be a bit messy to manage both Nugget on Unity, which doesn't support it by default. And so it's gonna be a whole messy thing. And also on the server project, if you know, I'm just gonna download the project, move the files and be done with it. So here are the files. So here is the, the, you know, the bulk of it. What we're going to do is going to open this, going to open the package that we created last time, and we're going to copy this by stream over. Now, whoopsie daisy, there's, there's a couple of things we need to worry about. So we don't need the CS project files. At least I, I don't think we do. <laughs> What we do need is we need to create its own little assembly definition. So it's just creating a bunch of meta files. That's fine. Yeah. So we're going to go over to this guy. Let's create an assembly definition definition. I'm going to say byte stream dot runtime. And the reason I say runtime is not that you need to put it, but it's usually a good thing, especially in unity, since you can have both editor stuff and runtime stuff. So runtime just means it's it's going to be available in the build. I wanted to do something here. Oh, it's complaining about unsafe. So allow unsafe code. And this should technically allow it to compile just fine. There you go. So now we have this. This should still be fine, right? So there's a serialization mode. So uh, there's 28 references. I might need to restart Visual Studio again because it's a little. Sometimes it forgets that it, new things were added. It doesn't have the coloring proper. Whatever. And it also works here. Cool. So let's create another um, assembly definition. And this one's going to be broadcasts. Broadcasts. All right. Well. I'm wondering, do we really care to create new assembly definitions for every single thing? Maybe we can just keep uh, like, I don't know, some like a scripts folder where we keep the, the main stuff just like so. Because I moved files this updated and then the rest I'll just put there. I don't want to deal with having to reference 10,000 packages, especially since the scope of this project is not going to be that big anyways. I can, also, I call, I can always refactor it in the future. But anyways, this still didn't break, even if I, after I moved it, which is cool. What do I want to do now? Completely forgot. We're doing broadcasts. So we're going to create a new script. I'm going to call this broadcast. Broadcast. 
this is gonna be a little trickier than I've thought. Um, okay, we're gonna do a couple of things. Let's uh, not include any Unity thing because I don't want the other one to break. So we're gonna create an interface. I guess we can put it into its own uh, file. And the interface is gonna be something like I broadcast or whatever. Essentially, I want to add this interface to every struct that can be broadcasted that is serializable. So I'm going to say, I guess I serializable, but uh, it's probably taken by the system. I networked. Yeah. I feel like it speaks about what it does, you know? So whatever this is attached to, it, it's going to do some networking stuff. And then here we're going to say void. Um, Serialize, I guess that's the right. Whoa. Let's see the example here. Yeah, serialize is what he said, so I guess let's do serialize too. We want this, oops, here, and we want to reference the project and call it like so. And we don't want a body. I don't know why it allowed me to. You can create default bodies for interfaces. Well, anyways. <laughs> serialize bada -bing, bada -bing. cool broadcast so we're gonna have a thing saying public static void send the thing is if this is going to be we might want to put this into its uh on, on, just on the client because you know the, the client is gonna have send to server and the server is gonna have send to client and since i don't want the clients to be aware of other clients, I don't really care about that. They're just gonna see changes happen to the map. They don't really care who made them, at least for now. I don't think it needs to be aware of clients for now. Let's do this. Uh, let, let's um, move this broadcast thing into Unity and not into shared script. And then we'll adapt it to the server and see what we have to do. Sounds like a plan. Let's just move it back into scripts. Broadcast. All right. Especially because this is going to need access to the client, uh, the network client in this scenario, because it can send data. Yeah. So here, I would want to make this a mono behavior for Unity's uh, scenario. And I would want to serialize and add the network client, uh, a reference to the client. And I want this to be a singleton, so I'm going to keep it a singleton. Uh, look at that, it's doing my job for me. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to map the static function call to a private function call, so send internal. And then here I'm just going to do this, right? So the static is just like sort of an interface. That way I don't have to, you know, keep a reference of this. I can just broadcast from anywhere. And then there's something interesting we want to do here. We want to be able to convert the, the type into a hash code, right? Because the type is the type of the message. So we, we need to be able to transform an actual type, you know, type of T, into a code, into some sort of index, or whatever the case may be, that we can identify, like, hey, we received this struct, like player health or player movement. We need to be able to identify who we're dealing with to be able to construct it and serialize it, right? So to do that, I'm curious, um, C sharp, I know there's a get hash code. Uh, is it deterministic? That's my curiosity. Yeah, so get hash code is different each time. Uh, C sharp get hash code from string. It returns identical. Oh, this is not unique. I'm trying to figure out if get hash code is consistent, deterministic, deterministic, guaranteed. <laughs> Returns the hash code of a read on it. Applies to C sharp is consistent. I guess that's a good way to put it. Can I depend on values to be consistent? If 
is consistent given the same value, but it is not guaranteed to be consistent across different versions of the framework. I, I guess different versions, I don't really... I do care, because my server doesn't run on the same uh, version on x86 framework. Here's the code, don't forget to compile, allow. Isn't there like a safe version of this? Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Much slimmer, slimmer. Uh, completely different to what... It's not consistent on different platforms. Oh, okay, it's fast consistent. Hash farming with good dispersion. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what programmers do best, and I'm gonna sneak snatch that out of its hands. I'm just gonna you know gonna do what programmers do best, being lazy. I'm gonna say public static uh, class hasher. I think I wrote that wrong. Hasher. Uh, of course, I want to make this public. And here I want to say var message ID equals hasher that get hash code of this. Um, I don't know if I uh, actually I would probably do want full name. Now another thing to note is, especially since this is also going to be running on the server, whenever you do stuff with strings, especially all of these fancy calculations right here. We're probably creating garbage each time because just strings like to be copied and they get copied on the, they're not on the stack, I don't think. I guess it depends on the language, but I'm gonna create a dictionary that will, you know, will cache this hash code. Uh, so we're gonna do something like this. Um, let's make it static. message IDs, right? So I'm gonna say something like, if message IDs that contains key type of that, if it contains the key, we're gonna get the key. So let's say, okay, no, try get value out var message ID, right? And if it didn't get the value, then we're gonna say message ID equals to that, but we cannot forget to assign it back to a dictionary. So this is just some simple caching doing uh, going on here. We can also make this read only because we're not assigning it anywhere else. And for consistency purposes, we can we should do this especially because I'm going to show you a, a little trick that I learned. <laughs> Not that long ago, which is kind of sad, because this is awesome, is taking this box and making sure these are disabled is going to allow us to enter play mode without reloading the main. The only downside of reloading the main, of not reloading the main in this scenario, is that static stuff isn't cleared automatically. So, for any static stuff, we're just gonna clear it manually. Whatever. Let's go ahead and, and I guess we can just add it here. So broadcast uh, network client is right here. We can add it to to our uh, what's it called network manager. Yeah. Now we need to create the stream. So if we go back to the original repo, we can see this is, uh, we are working with streams here. I just need to remind myself, I don't think they, so it's a managed stream that we're using. So we're gonna create here a private managed stream. We're gonna import that and we're gonna say stream. Here we're gonna go ahead and create a basic stream, and if I'm not mistaken, the default constructor, maybe it doesn't, I was gonna say the default constructor, reset, set read, reset write. Okay, I got it. So. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna say this dot reset right, and then we're gonna do stream dot serialize. There you go, serialize uh, message. No, 
my bad. We're gonna do message dot serialize street. So this is our uh, interface that we created. Not only that, actually, we need to also write the message ID. Right. This seems like it's a good good start, right? So, and after it creates it, we're gonna say stream that. How can I? I mean, I get I can get the buffer here. Okay, so this dot send. What do we have as send? Can I send a, a byte array in a specific array segment? I mean, I can send it an array segment, which is probably what I want to do. Crap! I open system dot ts again, <laughs> and it doesn't like it when I do that. New array segment is what we want. And there you go. This is what I was looking for. So here we want to say stream that buffer offsets from zero count uh, stream that length length or offset the total managed stream length in bytes, the current offset count, the total like, I don't know which which one of these I want. Yeah, okay, so this is the length. It's probably count then that I want. What is count? Let's see, count. Oh, count is not a thing. Why was it suggesting count then? Probably offset then. Uh, I'm assuming offset. Yeah, skip bytes. Okay, so offset seems to be the right uh, the right thing. The only thing I don't like about this is that it's creating a buffer each single time, which is a bit annoying. Oh well. Yeah, so this should send the server this. And then we need a way to, you know, receive data so on enabled is there some event here that we created or is there not I guess we didn't on connected and disconnected on received data so here we want to notify everybody else so we're gonna create a a public event action on data which is array segment byte on data received. Yeah, and then here we can say on data received. Making sure this is a null. Cool. So then here we can just say on data received, on data received. Um, make sure we and subscribe because again if you disable the main reload this well actually this would because it's not static but if it was static it wouldn't unsubscribe for you and you will get weird errors let's put this down here because that's where my brain is telling me to go i guess let's keep everything consistent so i received data what we want to do oh i think i just noticed an issue uh no no never mind I didn't notice an issue, but we're gonna have to fix something here. Whenever I receive data, we're gonna go ahead and say stream that reset read. Oop. Reset read. And then here, so it wants the data. Uh, we're just gonna say this dot uh, array. And we're gonna say that offset and this dot count and then int message ID Ooh, why can I not read okay read oops there you go now the issue is we cannot rely on this before we complete this 
function, let's create another static method. Uh, and this one will be called register. And here we need a callback, so action t callback, where t is private void, unregistered callback, action. Oh, it was doing a bunch of stuff in there. Whoops, I forgot that. Action t callback. <laughs> So what the register will do is we're going to, you know, register for events on a specific uh, type. So for example, if it's sending a, a struct called my type, we would register with my type and give it a callback. So whenever we receive that data from the server, that callback will be raised. So we want to do essentially the same thing. So maybe it might be a good idea to say something like private int get hash type type boom boom return message ID at the end here with a space preferably and we don't need to say type of because we have to type right here and we would just say var message ID equals to get hash of type of T same thing right here cool so now we need to save it somewhere. Now, the issue with this is that we cannot just simply add it to a dictionary or whatever the case may be, uh, even though that's what I'm inclined to do because it's a generic type. And what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to have something like this and we're going to say callbacks. Potentially, we need a list actually of actions. Right, so one type could have different listeners, not just one. And here, since we cannot just, you know, add, whoops, cannot just say add, add message ID callback. Well, for one, we need to get the list first. So one thing at a time. So if callback, try get value, type of T. Ooh, actually, it's not type of T that we want, it's int as in message ID. We're gonna do this. Callback, right? Uh, well, callbacks, right? So we're gonna say, if we didn't manage to get a callbacks list, then we're gonna create that list and we're gonna add it. This means this was the first time we are registering this uh, specific message for this specific message ID. Once we get that done, we gotta just, you know, add this so we're gonna say callbacks that add. Let's see, it sort of knew what I wanted to do. Which is pretty cool. Let's uh let's expand this a little bit and maybe try and fix this. Okay. So we're adding a lambda function that does the job inside here with a type T. So notice that we are adding just a generic uh, action, but we're not, but we're working with this T. So we're sort of capturing the scope of this. So it's doing some fancy stuff behind it, but I think this is the best, I guess the simplest way of doing it. And activated that create instance essentially just is the same as saying this, right? So well, we cannot do this here. I think we could potentially do it if we add constraint. Yeah, there you go. Well, never mind. We don't need to do fancy stuff. We can just say this and this and this. I guess we could also mark it as struct. Can I not say it's a struct? Struct must be before any other constraint. It's a struct. Cannot be used with a struct or unmanaged. Let's, uh, I, I, I want to make sure all data here is structs and not classes, because working with classes is a bit more of a pain. We're working with data and structs are good for working with data. Oh, look, we can still do new T because it's a struct. Fancy. We don't have to worry about anything else then. So what we're going to say is we're going to say var result. It's equal to a new uh, T, 
But before we do any of that shenanigan, yeah, we need to serialize with the stream. Now, this might break uh, for... Because see, we have a uh, one stream that we are using for everything. If this was uh, multi-threaded, we would be possibly reusing it in multiple places, which is a bad idea. But since this isn't multi-threaded, then it's fine. Actually, we don't have to do it in the callback. Why would I do it in the callback? It's a horrible idea. This is a much better idea. And it could potentially just say that. So I just call the callback with the result we just calculated. And we don't serialize it multiple times. I don't know what I was thinking. I was overcomplicating it. And the idea now that we have this uh, is that here we can say, ooh, wait a second. I'm a little confused. Now we do need... So the idea, right, was that we might need to add another one here, which is... ID to type. So we're gonna do this. And here we're gonna say, whenever you add something to the message ID, you're gonna add something, the same thing to the ID to type. Cannot forget to clear all your garbage. For static stuff. So this would allow us to get type. So var data type equals to this. Well, we should do some error checking. So if uh, try get value. Yeah, I think this sort of does what I wanted to do. Uh, try get value message ID of var type. What I want to do is if I failed, then go ahead and debug log error and return maybe not an error but a warning so an own message id or received message id but no type is registered for it and then return okay so received Message ID, but no callback is registered for it, sure. And then we get the list of callbacks. And then we're going to... How are we going to do this, actually? Because this is a little confusing to me. So then we have the result. I, I think a good idea could be to have an action that, re that has an object in there. Right? So object and then here uh what am i doing <laughs> and then here we do this why am i even serializing stuff wow i'm so dumb what <laughs> What did I smoke? I didn't smoke anything. So let's rethink about this. We want to register a callback for a message that we haven't received yet, so we don't need to serialize anything. We register the callback. If there's something there, we just get the callbacks list. If there's nothing there, we create a list and we add it, and then we just add this callback. And what this callback does is we'll call the original callback and cast the object to that type. And then down here, we do need to do create this. So remember, create instance is the same thing as saying uh, new type, right? But since we cannot do new type because type is dynamic, we can do activate a create instance. <coughs> and then we serialize its data. And for every callback, we call that. So I'm going to convert this to a for loop because for loops don't 
create garbage. And I know in Unity, for some reason, sometimes for each loops will create garbage because they changed some of the fundamental ways that it works. But yeah. Anyways, this should do it for the client. So we have a way to register for events and we have a way to send those events. And this can be static. Always make things static if you can. I can also make this sealed because I don't want anything to inherit from broadcast, especially because this is a uh, singleton. And you could put in checks to make sure there's no duplicates of broadcast in the scene, but I don't care that much about it. Yeah, and now let's uh, let's do the same on the server. So that way we are able to communicate between them and do some actual tests. And on the server side here, if we open this, we're going to create... Well, I guess we would need to call it something else because we cannot reuse the broadcast because uh, it's being used by the client. Let's do... Okay, so this is going to be the broadcaster. And then... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw things up here. It's a little... Things get a little confusing inside my head when we're mixing so much stuff. I mean, we essentially want the exact same thing, except that here's going to be a little bit different, the way we receive and send data. So maybe what we can do is we can have an interface that allows me to send and receive data. Well, actually, it's not going to be that different. So I think the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have this this broadcaster replace this and I'm going to rename this so that I don't I don't you know broadcast and broadcast that are too similar to exist in the same project. And essentially, I'm going to copy these signatures right here. We're going to keep these the same. I'm also going to need to get cash, but we can come back to this in a bit. So these two, I know for a fact that we need. What we also need, though, is send to client. And on the server side, on the chat example that we stole, where is it? I guess it's here in the session. There you go. So on received. We could do this. Where essentially we say public static void on received. Now, the only thing that I don't quite understand about this is how do you know who you're sending this to to all connected sessions but who sent you this message right it's, it's this session and this session has their own is there like a session ID ID TCP session that ID, but it's a GUID. <laughs> so I guess let's imagine we are the server and we're calling this send. We need to be able to send it to a session. So I wonder if Unity knows about this. Doesn't look like it does. Of course it doesn't, because we're using a completely different client. So I guess we do need a GUI GUID? Because I need to know who sent it. Well, the server knows who sent it. It's inferred by the fact that it received something from that session. But 
think the best way to go about this is have broadcaster be an instance instead of being something static. So what I'm thinking is, for example, each session would have its own broadcaster and its own events because they do have their own different methods. Uh, so like on here, for example, we would register all the different structs that we want to listen to. And that would be individual. The only issue is that we need to be able to send data. So my thought is we could do something like this, right? And then something like an interface where I send data. Oop, I don't know why I put that. And then here say send, uh, send data. So uh, a byte array data and offset in size, right? So sender, and then potentially, you know, another one. So I receive data. It's doing that. And this, this is should, this shouldn't be necessarily method. This should rather be a event on received. And then on this side, we're going to have a receiver, right? So each session can send and receive that up. And then we're just going to save them uh, in here. And these can be read only. And then we're going to do boom is equal to that and sender is equal to that. So we no longer need to do whatever I was going to do here, which is a very bad idea anyways. The idea is that we could do something like this. We no longer need, uh, well, we do need this. So let's just do some copying around uh, these. I'm probably going to need two. Just making sure I import all of those. Uh, I do not want to make them static though they're gonna become members <coughs> whenever it's sending we can do something similar to this I'm gonna go ahead and copy the get hash this can still be static there's no uh, oh this can only be static might be it because these are I don't know if I need type 2 ID am I even did I use it like, am I, uh, I guess, I guess I am using it here. Okay. ID to type. Okay. So on receive, we're going to do this later. We're going to push this down here. So let's handle the send. I guess we're gonna handle the unreceived already down here. I'm gonna go ahead and also do this. Which I guess we can just initialize it. I can make it read only. So here we're gonna have the buffer, the offset, and the size. Is the issue like so? Um, logger that log warning, which we don't have, so let's go ahead and create it. So, log. Warning, warning, and here, I guess we don't really care. I mean, yeah, we do that, we read the message ID, and we call the callbacks, this looks fine to me, so let's go ahead and continue copying the rest of the stuff. 
boom, just like so. And for the sending, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, except instead of client, we're gonna, you know, use the sender. And we're gonna do that. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I think that's everything. So this should allow us to handle this. Now, I guess I could keep this. So broadcaster is middleman. I don't know what to, what to call this. I wanted to create some static stuff. Like this, we can rename it to broadcast linker or something. Well, this, this would be actually the broadcaster. I'm in a bit of a pickle again. Maybe we can call this something like session broadcaster, because this is handling only a one-way tunnel. And then here, I would call this the actual broadcaster. And essentially, we would do something along the lines of this. So we don't need these. We need to create a session broadcaster here. So private session broadcaster broadcaster. We're going to create it here. I'm going to say this and this. And then I'm going to say that I send data and I receive data. I'm going to create whatever that makes us create. Uh, we're going to remove these. I'm going to do that. So, okay, we need to recreate this. We're going to say unreceived. Invoke that. Cool. And for the send, we're going to say client that sent data, uh, new array segment, like so. And then here we're going to go broadcaster, uh, I guess, instance that broadcaster that send message. And we also need the register, just like so. I think that's it. Uh, do we have any compiler issues? Failed. Oh, because it wants to use unsafe shenanigans. Allow unsafe. <laughs> what else do you want me to do? There you go, it's working now. Well, it's working, it's compiling at least. So let's go ahead and test this. We will need to say I sent data and I receive data too, just like we did on the Unity side. We're gonna have to implement these interfaces. Where were they implemented? It's a funny way of doing things. And where's the other one? A bit confused. Unreceived data. Does not implement, cannot, because it is not public. Confused. Uh, unreceived data, and we're gonna call this here. So this that invoke offset in size. Okay. What is it complaining about now? Okay, so this this is why it was specified this, right? That's why you did that, right? <laughs> the modified public is not valid for this item. Okay, I guess I just need to call this something else. On received data. Uh, why don't I do that? 
do this instead. And then here, on receive data. Look at that. Isn't that much better? <laughs> okay, now I need to also implement this one. I, where are you implementing things? Thank you. So we just need to be able to give it the ability to send data, which should be as simple as this dot send binary. I don't know about making it async or not. Do we, because I don't, it's a Boolean. Okay, whatever. I'm going to do it async. Now, what is it complaining about? Uh, on receive data must contain a non null value when exiting constructor. What if I want it to be null? What do you want from me? How I'm gonna make the event not be null? I don't. I really don't understand. I guess potentially by creating the actual thing. So a private um, read-only. What was it called? Session broadcaster, broadcaster, and then we're gonna go ahead and create it. We're not, yeah, this is the only place where, we, where we're doing this. And this should I really don't understand what its issue is. Can I do something like this? Okay. Jeez. And then we want to say that or well. We're gonna do some tests. So now we're, we're able <laughs> to receive that unconnected. We don't really care about this necessarily, right? Well, we might care about it later, but not now. Just gonna remove it so it's not in front of me. That's fine. And this is just our other random shenanigans. Yeah, I guess let's uh, let's do a test. So we have a file that's already called test. Let's go ahead and expand a bit on this. Let's go ahead and say public struct message A. Oops, why do I keep doing that? Public, sure, int, value. We need to make sure we specify that this is networked and it's gonna say, hey, you need to implement this, and then we can just say stream that serialize value. And then we can do the same thing for something like message B, where we can make it a string this time around. For that, we have a special uh, thing, encoding uh, UTF-8, or ASCII. Cool. So now what we're gonna do is on the chat client, potentially. Who's listening to this? Let's see, find usages, on message submitted. Can I do, for example, broadcaster that send message B with, well, I guess, yeah, it can't be guessed by that. And then here on the client, uh, sorry, on the server, we're going to say this that register message B on message B received. I'm going to go ahead and create this method. I'm going to go ahead and say a logger that log received message B with B that value. I wonder if this will work right out of the box, or if not. 
Connect it. Start it. I don't see any logs, funny enough. So, I'm curious. Uh, I am. So here, console that. Let's go ahead and write a thing. Or logger that log received data. Um, and send the size of the data. Sending that, it didn't receive data. Maybe it's something on this end? Debug, dialog, sent. Oh, I cannot do debug dialog here. Logger that log sent message with the ID. All right, we need to create to start the server. That way we can connect from here. Hello world, connecting, connected, and I, so sent message. Why isn't this receiving anything? I wonder. So there's got to be an issue with our broadcaster because th this is definitely being called. So let's see, session broadcaster. On receive data. So there's definitely something happening here, I think, right? Let's go in. Oh, actually, I think I'm... So I send data and I receive data, which is this guy. And this guy is being invoked here. And this I'm curious about something. On this connected, on connected. Maybe I need to override these for the connection to but no, it said connected. Still. Let's uh, try this again. It's a little bizarre. So received data 54. I guess I forgot to remove something. So sent message. Yet this guy isn't receiving anything. Wait. Is it in building? Succeeded. Okay. On received. <laughs> am I going crazy? Why am I receiving data? I'm looking at the session, which is oh crap, which is the right thing to be looking at. Okay, let's let's isolate everything and let's try to figure out what the hell is going on here. Now, am I using this client? What is this? Okay, yeah. So this is a HTTP client. Gotcha. That's that's cool. Well, whatever. It's not a big deal. On received, we should be able to see this, which we never do. This is saying log line. What else are we sending data? We're sending data for these, but these 
and the login. I might need to check the, the example again. Not only that, it might be a good idea to separate the WebSocket logic from the HTTP serving thing, file serving thing. Anyways, let's see. So we have a simple, where's a the, the little simple chat? <laughs> so this is why this wasn't working because I was connected to, <laughs> connected to the remote server. I, I was not connecting to the local one. All right, connected, connected, sending a message. So sent message, received message. All right, so if I send Ada, received message, Ada. Golly. Now why do I see this twice? Ada, received Ada 9, received Ada 9. Disconnected. Why did I get disconnected? And why is it receiving two? Oh. Okay, that's fine then. Okay, let's remove these logs. So dumb. Result may be null here. Fixed. <laughs> it's it's not null. Trust me. Trust me, bro. Okay. It is a null. This I uh, don't really care about either. Just do the thing. Do you not really care? All right. So now what's cool about this system is that if we say something like received message A, and then we say, do how many values we have here? One, received message A. And then here, cannot infer, wait, what is happening? Oh, what? I guess, whatever. Anyways, if we send here a message in the chat client, instead of sending uh, bootstrap or whatever we're sending it, let's send message A with a value of 4269. Now, once this compiles and we run the server, we should see a different message. Sending this, receive message A. So just by sending a different struct here, we're able to do different things here, solely based on the type, which is pretty cool, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, this is where I'm gonna stop this one because it's been dragging for too long and I'm too tired to do normal stuff. But before we close, I'm gonna go ahead and push. So we get bro broadcasting done. So status, add, uh, commit, smart broadcasting. And this is a feature. I'm so tired. See you on the next one.